So, I'm here with Anders Wendahl. And you come from? Well, I come from Sweden and from Karolinska Institutet, which actually is a medical university. Uh -huh. And your background? Well, I've been a librarian for well more than 20 years now, and um, I started my career as a mathematics librarian, and maybe that's why I'm at ICTP right now. I see. And you were giving a talk and, and about predatory journals in this meeting, and so that's the reason why I thought we could have this interview so we can spread the word about the issue. So what is a predatory journal? Well, that's a phenom phenomenon that has um, increased lately, like four or five years ago they started. It's basically a journal which is not very uh, uh, connected with academia. It's more like uh, private enterprises. And uh, you can say that they are, um, the characteristics are that they have a very high acceptance rate, which is good, of course. They have a very fast turnaround time that you will be uh, published um, within uh, days or, or even hours sometimes. Uh, but the, uh, the, the back side of this is they uh, perform a minimal or a non-existent peer review. So, so uh, there is actually no guarantee uh, that the published articles are of any good scientific quality and you can also say that they use an aggressive mailing campaigns and I guess that all of the people that are scientists and look at this interview right now they have received lots and lots of um, emails from different publishers um, asking them to to publish in just their particular journals I certainly have myself and often uh, you can tell because they, they say, given your expertise in XYZ, which is very far from mine, uh, yeah. we ask you to publish in this journal. And uh, do they really make money on this? Uh, apparently they do. Uh, they have an estimate from 2014 that uh, this uh, industry, if you call it that, they made uh, about $75 million. Uh, so they certainly make money, yes. And so what would be your advice to researchers to avoid getting trapped into this business? Well, first of all, I think you have to think. Uh, have you heard about this journal before? Is it something that you recognize? Uh, is the publisher clearly stated? Some of the journals, they don't even have a publisher. They just exist on their own. Uh, and then uh, can you contact the publisher? Is there any contact ways? Email? Can you contact by email? Do they have any address at all? Uh, then maybe the most important thing is I think that you should check whether this journal or not is indexed by the major databases and in your field I guess it's Centralblatt and MathSciNet and InSpec and all these um, physics and mathematics databases. If they're not indexed in those databases uh, there is a big risk that your research will not be found. Um, you can of course find this in Google Scholar this but I think uh, to be indexed in one of the major databases is actually a sign of quality. Uh, and then you should look for editorial members. Can you recognize any editorial members uh, for this journal that you uh, know, that you rely on and so forth? Uh, and then also uh, if there is money involved, which is always is, uh, how much is the money? How much is the cost for publishing on this particular journal? Sometimes they don't state the amount of money and when it comes to publishing, um, you will be, um, well, disappointed, to say the least. Uh, and also, uh, maybe the most, but one of the most important things is if this journal is serious, they are usually a member of some industry organization. And uh, that could be like the uh, Coalition of Open Access uh, Science Publishers and so forth. And you should really uh, find this, this kind of... of um, sign on the publisher that we belong to to um, the organization and we um, that is trustable that is trustable exactly exactly trustable yeah and um, so do you keep a website or do you have places that one could access uh, to read more about this uh, maybe I'll I could put it as a as a link to this video but yeah but, but the uh, one interesting thing about this uh, whole business is that there is no whitelist there is a blacklist and uh, what I uh, recommend people for now, they should check up a website from a um, librarian at, in Denver, Colorado. His name is Jeffrey Beal. That's B E A L L. And if you Google for Beal and List, you will find his webpage. 
and he lists a long, long uh, list of, of uh, suspicious journals and also uh, publishers. And I think if you find a specific journal on that list, uh, you should uh, be very reluctant to publish with him. But also I would say that we really need a white list as well. And the best I can think of is if you publish in journals that are covered by Centralblatt, Inspec, MathSciNet, then you should be pretty well off. You can treat that as a pseudo white list at the moment. Exactly. I do that. And uh, I also understand that this predatory uh, business feeds, as predators do, on the needs of a lot of people that have the pressure to publish because uh, they need that to justify their current position or the, the, the position they're aspiring to. So this is some, somehow uh, a... Uh, they, they exist because there are people that, that are uh, vulnerable uh, in, in this in environment. Oh yes, there wouldn't be any business at all if people didn't um, uh, publish in these journals. And, and also, uh, they may be a kind of weak papers that cannot find any other outcome than publish in these journals. Uh, and in that sense, well, they do some kind of publishing job, so to speak. But the, the very um, sad thing is if you have a really good paper and you happen to publish in these journals by mistake, you have kind of wasted your research. Um, but of course, if you look in the, um, uh, many of, of the, uh, the papers that are published in these journals, they come from India, they come from Africa, they come from Asia. And the journals are also mostly from India and from China and are run by, by um, uh, people in those countries. So it's kind of... Well, uh, a, a, what do you call it? A second, uh, another world for publishing, uh, as compared to to the uh, the normal publishing industry. I see. And um, there's also the main, the thing you mentioned in your talk that uh, you cannot submit the same paper to two different journals. So if you happen to get trapped into one of these things and you're unhappy with it, you may be stuck. Uh, that your uh, your research is in that poor uh, quality journal. Yeah, that's uh, well. the tradition in science is that you cannot submit to two different journals at the same time. And, and if you submit to, uh, well, we had one case at my university when um, um, a researcher submitted to one of these predatory publishers uh, and she tried, she realized her mistake, she tried to um, withdraw the journal, the journal article, and, and then she somehow managed to do that. And they sent resubmitted to a real journal, so to speak, and then all of a sudden uh, they, the predatory publisher, published her journal article in their journal and she was published in another journal, the real one, and then, well, that's she now a problem. Has two, two, the same paper in two places. Exactly, and that's a problem, of course. Right. That's a problem. Okay, well, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much.